Now we want to share how our interconnected community actually extends into enterprises and large organizations and helps them be part of the community too. And to tell you about that, I'm super excited to have Dana Lawson, Vice President of Engineering, join us. Dana? Danke, Shanku. I've been waiting to say that for a long time. Howdy, y'all. What a privilege it is to be here today in beautiful Berlin. And I don't know about you, but this space is just absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, I've never been at a conference like this. Um, so as you've heard from Nat, Shanku, and Gray, that the world of open source is truly an interconnected community. Not only does it take a global team to create your favorite open source technologies, the same is true for enterprise products and companies that we've come to know, love, and trust. Did you know that enterprise companies are the largest contributors and consumers of open source? And we are so proud to play a part in the products that these software companies make. With over 2 million organizations trusting GitHub, as well as over half of the Fortune 50 companies use GitHub Enterprise for their internal development. I love that these companies are sharing their code and ideas, but the downside for these large-scale organizations is that it's just still too difficult to understand how they're using open source, how secure they are, in addition to what packages and products they're bringing into their ecosystems. But more importantly, how their broader teams are innovating and collaborating. Here at GitHub, we listened, and I am so pleased to announce, available today, these four new enterprise features that will help not only me as an engineering leader, but countless other companies as they continue to innovate. And they are enterprise accounts, internal repos, new roles and permissions, and organization insights. So let's dive in. Last October, we introduced a limited beta for enterprise account feature. With enterprise accounts, you can group all the organizations in a single account, making it easier for you to manage the needs of every org and team in your company. But just with enterprise accounts, we also wanted to make it easier for companies to share their code across the organization in a safe, open, and secure way. Before, you only had two choices, private and public repos. And today, we're introducing internal repos. I'm sure you're like, what are internal repos? They don't make no sense. We already have private repos. I know, right? Um, but internal repos are a way for helping enterprise companies stay interconnected because software development is truly a team sport. It takes designers, tech support, sales, even bosses like me, uh, and others in an organization to build these products we love. Because it's not just about developing code. It's about everything that we do to make it wonderful. So now with enterprise internal repos, you can broadly share your projects where every user in an enterprise account can participate. No more trudging through going, hey, can I get access to that? Can I get access to that? Now you have access to that. So you're welcome. <laughs> so we created enterprise accounts. Yeah. It's a big deal, y'all. So we created enterprise accounts to easily manage your org and internal repos to intersource your projects. But we also wanted to help maintainers, because it's not all about enterprise. It's really about y'all. And enterprises alike have the ability to give the right access at the right time. Because like I said, it's not just about writing code. It's about everything else that happens. And it's just equally as important. Our goal is to enable everyone to contribute, no matter if you're new to open source or you're an enterprise company with nuanced needs. So we've worked to overhaul our permission model to introduce new roles for your team, the triage and maintain role. The triage role allows users the ability to manage issues without having to have right access to your code. So I know you maintainers are going to feel pretty good about that when those noobs get in your repos and you're like, I don't know you, but I love you, but you can't write. So you're welcome. <laughs> the maintain role, which has most of the rights of admins, but removes the ability to do dangerous things like delete repos. Because believe me, you don't want to do that. Not that I have, but maybe I have. Okay, I have. But whatever. You don't want to be that person. Don't be me. That's, that's why I don't, you know, anyway. <laughs> now that we have all these tools to better enable your enterprise teams to ship smarter, faster, and more secure, we also wanted to give them the ability to understand how they're using their development work flows. 
With organization insights, you can now understand where your teams are spending time in these workflows, what languages you're using, and what's changing over time in your company's ecosystem. And this is just the beginning. With Org Insights, our goal is to be the instrument panel for your development lifecycle. Now listen, I am sure you are as excited as I am about these features. And we are bringing to developers, maintainers, and enterprise companies alike. And I am also sure you never thought enterprise could be so cool, because believe me, it is. I mean, look at this. Um, but most importantly, more, <laughs> most importantly, valuable because it really does take a global team to build these global products, and we really want to enable everybody, no matter where you come from, no matter where you work, and no matter what you do. But don't just take my word for it. Here to tell their story how enterprise company Shopify has embraced open source and enabled their culture with the mantra, open by default, are Sebastian and Christian. Thank you, Dana, and thank you for having us. This is really exciting. So my name is Christian. I'm a staff developer on the payments team in Montreal. And I'm Sebastian, senior production engineer, also in Montreal. So we're part of Shopify, and for those who don't know Shopify, we're an e-commerce platform that allow for small, medium, and big merchants to sell their products across a plethora of channels. And our core mission is really to make commerce better for everyone, which also involves open source. We're at around 4,000 employees now. We have 800,000 merchants across 175 countries. And we have several um, offices around different cities, including in Berlin. Now, Shopify started in 2006. And if we really want to be that 100-year company, we need to invest in our stack. And a big part of our stack is Rails. Rails being powered by Ruby, we actually contribute to its ecosystem. In fact, Toby, our CEO, used to be a core contributor. Now, we also have a dedicated Rails core team with contributors. And as much as possible, we live on the cutting edge releases of Rails. That allows us to benefit from the latest performance enhancements, features, and bug fixes, many of which we contributed to. It also allows us to reduce the maintenance cost, but most importantly, fosters success for all of the community. Thanks. Well, I mean, as much as Rails development is at the core of our business, Shopify platform is actually a full ecosystem of different technologies. I mean, as the company grew, our needs became more specific, and we needed projects that would properly tailor to our specific needs. And after all, writing code is part of the fun of solving problems. Excluding forks, Shopify has over 200 open source repos that are available out there. And perhaps the most interesting story of an open source is Bootsnap. So Bootsnap is a library that plugs into Ruby and optimizes and caches expensive computations with a focus on reducing the boot time for Rails. For the Shopify core platform, it was able to slash the boot time in four, dropping from 25 seconds to around six. I mean, open source two years ago, the project has received over 100 pull requests. And now it's activated by default in Rails 5.2 powering all the million or so Rails websites out there. I mean, Shopify believes in open doesn't start at the publication of a project, but that it's much bigger than open source. Internally, we have a deep culture of a transparency. The vast majority of our Slack communications are happening in public channels. And in the vault, our internal wiki, we're able to facilitate the search across all of our shared knowledge. I mean. Internal work is not about signing NDAs. It's about people working together. But what about the code? I mean, yes, we use GitHub. And with very few exceptions, all developers, designers, content creators have access to all the repositories, issues, and project briefs. Teams are encouraged to create repos and share between each other. GitHub essentially allows us to bring that open source mentality inside Shopify with zero effort. I mean, projects are generally started by individual team. And over time, internal communities will start forming and, um, around technologies and sharing their struggles and their solutions. I mean, organically, projects become co-maintained, and they spread throughout the company, eventually becoming the standard and re recommended by default on our projects. 
if and when those projects be are made public, those same communities carry on and become the stewards that are public facing. GitHub can help us carry us the open philosophy throughout that development cycle. But allowing the communities to flourish that much tends to multiply the number of repositories. Throughout its years, Shopify has created over thousands of repositories. And having so many repos comes with com some complexity. The role of my team, Developer Acceleration, is to reduce that friction, to automate and to standardize. I mean, our customers are the developers. We want to empower them. And the better we enable them, the better they go on and serve their own customers. So we integrate into GitHub's API. And we provide tooling for local development, review, testing, production. And even after production, carries on in the maintenance and the feedback loop that comes back. Whether development is happening within a team, across team, or out in the public, the platform remains the same. That's a lot of investment. But connecting our teams with the rest of the world, we allow the crowdsourcing of that maintenance and the rest of the development. So we've been doing open source for many years. And I wish we had developer acceleration a decade ago. So about around 2008, 2012, um, we released two open source libraries under a sister GitHub organization called Active Merchants. And the goal of those libraries were a means of quickly expanding the payments accepted by merchants in new markets. And at the time, it was the easiest way we knew of for expansion. So let me explain a bit. The way it would work is partners would write their own implementation of those libraries. Those libraries would have just simple abstractions. We, they'd open up a PR, we'd review it, then merge it back, and that would save us from writing all the code. Then we'd simply bump the version of Active Merchant inside of our platform, and merchants would instantly have access to many more payment gateways. So in that sense, we ended up in a very interesting client-provider relationship. We not only provided the platform, but we provided an SDK to work with the platform. And this beneficial two-way street of collaboration allowed growth not only for Shopify, but for payment gateways to be included on Shopify. And then, being that it's open source, it doesn't stop there, right? We also have a co-maintainer, Spreedly, who uses the libraries in production as well. And this is only one example of ours. So investing in open source means different things, obviously different things for different companies at different stages. But if done correctly, applying the open principles to various communities, be it internal or external, blurs the lines and makes them interconnected. Having an open mindset is beneficial to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.